there was a study done um, by, I think it was Harvard, where they found that people need a certain basic amount of money to be happy. So they came up with a number like, I think it was $50,000. And they said that $50,000 is the minimum required for you to be, to live a happy life. And the funny thing is that when they were asked on a Gallup poll, double that amount of money doesn't make you twice as happy. So you just need a minimum required to live. In a consequence study done by Harvard, they found that the one, the, 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 the top answer about what makes you happy, what completes you, is a nourishing relationship. So we need our relationships in order to, to, to live in this world. One thing is for certain, we cannot live alone. We just cannot in this world. We need people. We need people all the time. If, you know, if we, if we were hardwired to be all by ourselves, we'd be sitting you know, on, on little islands, we'd be marooned on little islands and living there. But no, we live in communities. We live in families. We develop friends. Besides, if you notice, all the jobs that you do, that traditionally, say, a hundred years ago, what the family used to do, has now been taken up by different people. You know, there's, there's the garbage collector, then there's the, the psychiatrist, and then there's the doctor, and then there's the, you know, physician who comes, and then there's nurses, and then there's social workers, and there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of, the, the whole healthcare system, right? Whereas the original healthcare system used to be mom and dad, and grandma, and grandma's recipes. Grandma's uh, remedies for all your illnesses. Now you've given that to a bunch of other people and you find yourself more and more isolating yourself. So over a, the trend that I have noticed from the time I was a child, when we were children, we came home from school, we dropped our bags, we ran out to play. Now, that was not the case when we came to live in America and our, my children wanted to go out and play. I had to call somebody up, make a play date and make sure that and there'd, there'd probably be two people, two kids playing together. It was never that group where we were in a, in a group setting. And then, you know, things changed when my younger daughter was in college. She didn't even, at school, she didn't even have a cell phone. You know, it came late when she was in high school and I'm not even sure she carried a cell phone every day to work. Today, every first grader and every second grader has got a cell phone. You go anywhere, you go anywhere and people are looking at their phones. You go to a doctor's office, you go to a train station, you go to an airport, you go anywhere. People have a better relationship with their phone than they have with other people. Just think about that. It's true. We are so connected with social media. In fact, there was another study that I read about, about why relationships don't, why marriages don't work. That why there's a lack of intimacy between couples is because if they're together and the phone pings, they're more likely to look at their phone and pay attention to their spouse or to their partner. And this has been, so, you know, you've been slowly, slowly isolating yourself from people. You spend your time commuting to work, you go to work, you see who you have to see, you do your job, you come back, you're more, more focused on getting some exercise in and then cooking your dinner and then sitting in front of the TV and go to sleep. And that's the, the routine day after day after day. And you think what evening, weekends is when you when you uh, you know end up socializing. And there hasn't been time to cultivate the important relationships that nurture you. Most often, what happens is that you surround yourself with people, and it's loud, it's noisy, it's in the setting of a bar or a or a, a loud brunch place. It's it's not necessarily people 
that uplift you because there's not much conversation going on except about light social topics or pop culture or things like that. Whenever you meet people in a very light setting, there's never any deep conversations. The conversations with your parents, you know, become one phone call once a week. Oh, mom, I'm really too busy. I'll call you, you know, when I'm walking to work or when I'm, you know, in, in the, um, driving and I can't do anything else uh, or, you know, uh, in between this and in between that. I'm, I gotta go, gotta go and that's it. Now what has happened in this current circumstance? We've just been forced in each other's company. The last time the dad saw uh, the baby was well while they're changing diapers and now you know they're getting to know their children isn't that strange they're getting to talk to their children getting to talk about different topics because there's nothing else to do and there's only that much TV that you can watch and that's a wonderful thing because this is a time when you realize who your real friends are who are the people that you go to to uplift you, to make you feel good when you're feeling low, when you're feeling dull, when you're feeling tired? Who are the people that you are going to? Who are the people that you are talking to? And who are the ones that you really don't have a relationship with, or you don't care to inculcate that relationship? So this has become a crucial time. And it, it, it's some, uh, I think it's going to be life-changing. It's going to be life-changing, at least for this generation of people that have been so caught up with social media and so caught up with entertain, the world of entertainment and the outside world that you finally, and I'm not sure that everyone is doing it, I'm sure that there are those of you that would rather, you know, just spend the, spend the day sitting in bed watching TV shows and then the evening with a couple of bottles of wine. And that's fine. That's how you want to do it. But if you want to change things, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to get to know your friends better, to get to know your family better and to get to know yourself better. Because now... The outer silence, the outer noise has been, has, is gone. It's gone. Now you're only left with the sounds that your mind is producing. All the sound bites that you just pushed into the background because you had so much other noise going. So many different uh, things taking your attention. You know, your apps, your phones, your exercise, your bars, your running, your trekking on the weekends, all the activities back to back, back to back. You had a lot of noise. Now there's nothing. Even when you go for your walk, you're on your own. It's just you and the highway of your mind, all the thoughts that are coming up. And now you're coming up close and personal with who you are. And that's going to make a big difference in the future because now is the time that all whatever changes you make whatever steps you take is going to open up a different destiny for you destiny is not something that that somebody decided right there are choices there are choices that you make and based on the choice that you make today your destiny opens up for you. A different avenue opens up for you. Your action today is what decides everything. Everything. You take a different decision and it's a different set of choices open to you. You surround, you marry one person, or you, you pick one person to be your companion and the friends that you have and the family that you have and the children that you have are going to be different. You pick someone else and you're going to have a different set of consequences. It's not decided by someone above, it's decided by you. You are in control of who you surround yourself with. Do you have people near you that love you, that 
build you up, that say positive things to you, that show you the way to yourself, that allow you to make the right choices, that give you the freedom to think clearly and openly in any way you want, to pick the career choices that are right for you and not for the family and not for the community you live in. You have people around you that appreciate you for you with whatever you bring, whatever baggage you bring. There is no perfection in this world. Nobody is perfect. Nothing is perfect. Even creation is not perfect. If it were, nothing would change. Nothing would change. There would be no evolution. Evolution would come to a complete standstill. There would be things are continually happening because you can, you can make improved and better choices each time. You can, every moment is, a, is, a, is potential, is pure potential. That's how you have to think of the present moment. Like right now, you can do anything you want. But you need the right people around you because you have to have people around you that tell you, you are great. You are fabulous. You can do this. I love having you by my side. You're the best person in my life. You know, you're made of wonderful stuff. You, know, you don't want those that say, please, you're giving me a headache. Don't come here. Please, can you go to your, and do it in your own space? I need my own space to think. Right? you got to be able to live in each other's energy. That's important. And you don't have to agree. It's not important that you agree on anything. You can have different opinions. You can have two friends, one's a Democrat, one's a Republican, and you can still be loving and nurturing to one another. You don't have to have the same political ideology, the same religion. You don't need to come from the same country. You know, the, the, the spiritual family that you have is most likely not your immediate family. You'd be surprised at the kind of people that come into your life that change everything for you. You know, it could be a co-worker, it could be somebody you meet on the street, somebody who tells you something harsh that makes you take a different decision. You might hate them for it, but that might be the best advice given to you. So, the people around you should not say the things that you want to hear, but they should be saying the things that you need to hear. Because we all have room for improvement. We all have to surround ourselves with people that just nurture and build us up. Make us better versions of ourselves. Allow us to connect deeply with our own source. That's the most important thing. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you like the content, hit the red subscribe button. I'm also on Facebook on my author page, Kanchana Krishnan Iyer, and I'm also on Instagram. See you there. I'll link it down below.